All right, there's a video of 3HT about exercise 33. This is about the uh, supermarket Jumbo, and they sell three types of apples. And for each type of apple, 80 are randomly selected and weighed. See this figure, and you see a box plot for each type. So one thing you notice is that this box plot is a lot bigger than the other box plots, even though it is the same amount of apples. The only thing a box plot says is how much is spread out. And you can see that the spread is pretty big here. The lowest apple, the apple with the lowest weight, only weighed 100 grams, while the heaviest was 150 grams. And you can see that for type B, everything is a lot closer together. Now let's see if we can figure out what the answers for these questions are. Exercise A. For which type are the most apples heavier than 130 grams, and how many are heavier than 130 grams? So for type A, we can see that only 25% of the apples weigh more than 130. Right? In case you forgot, a box plot divides everything in parts of 25%. So this is 25%, this is, this is, and this is. So only 25% here is bigger than 130. For type B, that's 50%. And for type C, it's 75% that's bigger than 130 grams, or heavier than 130 grams. So the answer is type C, and how many apples is that then? 75% of 80 is 60 apples, so that's the answer for A. Moving on to exercise B, how many apples are heavier than 118 grams altogether? Right? So for all three types together. Well, 118 is over here, so you can see that every apple for type C and every apple for type B is bigger than that, and half of the apples for type A. So you add, this is uh, 160, this is, one, uh, this is 80 and 80 together, that's 160, plus the 40 you have here. So in total, you have 200 apples that are heavier than 118 grams. C. How much does the heaviest apple weigh? Well, the heaviest apple is over here, so that's 150 grams. Question D. For which type is the interquartile range the smallest, and how much is it? Okay, so the interquartile range is the difference between Q1 and Q3. So you can see that for type A, the difference is quite big. For type C, it's a lot smaller, but for type B, it's the smallest. And the interquartile range here is from 127 to 135, so the difference is 8. So that's the interquartile range for D. Then E, which conclusions can you draw from this figure? Let's look at conclusion 1. Half of the apples of type A weigh less than any apple of type B and C. Okay, so half of the apples for type A are over here. And you can see that these box plots are completely to the right side of it. So conclusion A is correct. Half of the apples of type A weigh less than all of the apples from B and C. Conclusion number two, maybe that one is correct as well. Each apple of type B weighs less than the heaviest quarter of type C. Okay, so the heaviest quarter of type C is over here, right? And you can see that everything from type B weighs less than that. So... Indeed, conclusion 2 is correct. Each apple of type B weighs less than the heaviest quarter of type C. Conclusion 3. The heaviest half of type A contains more apples than all apples of B together. Okay, so they say the heaviest half of type A, so this, has more apples than B here. Well, that's not correct, because here they said that each type has 80 apples. So half of A is 40, and that's not more than 80. So, conclusion 3 is a nonsense. That one is not correct. So, those are the answers for exercise 33. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.